Okay. So, went to court today. Um, the result of it was they're going to reset the arraignment for March 30th, which is a 33. Once again, in courtroom 33. What are the odds of that happening? Here's how it went. <clears throat> Here's how it went. Um, before I even went up there, I knew it, it took a long time. It, the, 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 the time to be there was 8.30, but we didn't really get seen till like 10. And it felt like forever. And uh, I was just nervous, as nervous as you can possibly be. I should have took Kaba, but I didn't because I thought I felt pretty confident going into it, and uh, so they called me up there, and you're not supposed to bring your anything. The, the the so-called defendant is not supposed to bring anything up there with them, and you know I had my affidavits in hand in my folder and all the things I wanted to say in my hand. So as soon as I said. Um, my honor, um, my notes, the, I need my notes with me, um, I need to stand at this podium with my notes, and as soon as I said that, they went right, I got like two bailiffs left and right side, and then, as soon as I said, and then the next, the very next thing to happen was, um, I said, this, this one Asian attorney was trying to be my public defender. And I said, Your Honor, this man cannot represent me because I'm in propria persona sujuris. And then she said, um, raise your right hand. And she said, Jordan Womble, raise your right hand. I said, I'm not Jordan Womble. I'm not a dead corporate entity. And then she said, what is your name then? If you're not, if you're not Jordan Womble, I said, I said, I am that I am, and she said, who is I am that I am, and I said, I am that I am, and she, and then this is when the third bailiff came, and uh, so I, I knew right then that I had to give a name, because if I didn't, I probably would have got my face slammed to the floor, so in the interest of preserving this, I said, my name is Go To, and then that everyone was like laughing and um, they were trying not to, they, were, were, they weren't laughing out loud, but they were just trying to, they were going like, you know, covering their mouth. And I said, go to capital G, lowercase o, lowercase t, lowercase u. They, they didn't even bother asking for a last name. They just, you know, they just kept going. And so, she was like, okay, go to, I'm going to ask, I'm going to see how, if you're, um, I think I'm going to ask you uh, questions and see if you're qualified to represent yourself in court. And I said, she asked me what my highest level of education was, and this was probably where I went wrong, because I, I probably should have answered the question, but instead, I, um, told her that I'm not here to argue subject matter, and then, actually I think I'm getting ahead of myself, you have to forgive me because I'm kind of in a state of shock right now, so you kind of have to forgive me, but um, before this happened, I went right in for the kill with the, Your Honor, I requested an oath of office Oath of Ethics, Delegation of Authority Order, and bond number from everyone involved. And it's my Article 3 constitutional right to see this. And she looked at me like, I'm sorry, she looked at me like, it was, it was a look of sympathy, but she obviously has a responsibility to put me away and make an example of me. And even my dad's girlfriend, who drove me to court, said that they totally just 
I mean, my dad's girlfriend was a paralegal, and she said they totally ignored you about the uh, delegation of authority order and the oath of office, the oath, oath of ethics. She said, even my dad's girlfriend was like, they totally ignored your affidavits. And I said, I, yeah, I know. I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. They just flat out ignored my affidavits. And I, I, sh I flat out told the judge... Um, it was starting to get, it was starting to get bad, you know what I mean? I was starting to get, like, it was starting to get really bad, and, um, she, she tried to throw it over to the prosecutor, and I said, objection, your honor, this court has not observed status or jurisdiction. I said, I'm not, I just came out with it. I said, you know, I'm not in jurisdiction, I'm a living soul, I live inside my body, I'm not a citizen, I'm not a resident, I'm not a defendant, and then, um, the prosecutor was talking, and I tried to object over him, and she's like, she's just like, excuse me, you don't have the right to talk, you can't talk. And she didn't even, she didn't even say, like, overruled or sustained as far as the prosecutor talking. She just kept, like, you know, rolling over me. And the prosecutor was like, oh, this is Jordan Womble, the FBI said this was Jordan Womble. It was uh, Jordan Womble's YouTube, according to the search warrant. And I'm like, I'm not Jordan Womble. And they completely forgot. I gave them a name, and they didn't even, like, as soon as I gave them the name, go to, they didn't even acknowledge the name. They just kept going back to Jordan Womble. Jordan Womble, I'm like, I'm not Jordan Womble. I'm, I'm go to. And, of course, they weren't hearing any of that. So... Now here's where it gets hilarious. Like this is where it gets really good. So, the so-called public defender, the guy who's supposed to be, quote unquote, defending me. Of course, he comes to my offense, where he's like, uh, I'm trying to rem I'm trying to remember exactly how this went. Uh, Basically, the very last portion of the courtroom session, if you want to call it that, was the magistrate, Lisa Campbell, ordered that the, the arraignment be reset to March 30th, 2015, which is obviously 33, for courtroom 33. And then she's like, I'm going to assign this Asian man to you as your public defender and that's that. There's, I'm not going to hear you talk anymore. And and it's, I tried to say, where's your delegation of authority? And then she just like, um, the deputies were like, that's it. You know, I could tell if I said, if I said one more thing, I could tell I was going to get in big, big, big trouble. Which I, I I'm assuming next time is when they're going to put me in contempt of court. Um, so here's where it gets really good. So I walk outside and the, the Asian uh, public defender is like, he's like, I'm your lawyer now. And I said, you can't represent me. I don't consent to you representing me. I said, you can't represent me because I'm in propria persona. And he's like, where'd you learn that at? Where'd you, where'd you hear that at? And I said, I didn't even respond. I'm just like staring at him blankly. And I just kept saying, I'm not in your jurisdiction. And you have to keep in mind that all lawyers are against you because they're agents slash officers of the court. And I could tell all the outrage I received in the court was fake outrage because I've been to army boot camp and I know when a drill sergeant is faking being mad at you versus when he's actually mad at you. So I can tell this reaction I got from the court was all rehearsed and so the Asian public defender kept telling my dad's girlfriend like I need to talk to you I need to talk to you I said Lori I said he can't represent me you know just let's just go and then now here's the funny part the so-called public defender who wants me to pay him money was like hey we need to get this guy a, a mental exam That's the funny part. The guy who wants me to pay him, who's not even the 
state of representing the state of Florida, who he's not even the prosecutor, and the guy wants me to pay him money so he can tell the judge I need a mental exam. I could tell the uh, I could tell that the Asian public defender guy was just so acting, and he was trying to get me to. He was he was he was really raising his voice at me. He was trying to get me to raise my voice to him so the bailiffs could slam me to the ground. And there was at the at the very end, there was five bailiffs surrounding me, and one was right behind me, ready to throw me to the ground. And so the Asian lawyer just kept like yelling at me, and of course I knew exactly what he was trying to do. He's trying to bait me into you know, swinging at him or raising my voice at him or whatever. Of course, I wasn't going to fall for that cheap trick. And <sighs> But my, my dad's doing okay. He's still alive. Um, however, I want to reiterate that I really did feel like I was about to have an out-of-body experience uh, about 10 minutes before I actually got called. And it's funny how you try to represent yourself and the bailiffs are all over you. And I totally got steamrolled and she totally ignored the... She ignored the affidavits I filed. She ignored the delegation of authority order, oath of office, oath of ethics, and bond number. She just blatantly ignored all that. And I even said, for the record, my constitutional rights are being violated. And it's funny how the deputies are there. They're sworn to uphold the Constitution, but, of course, I guess it just doesn't mean anything anymore. Obviously, I'm not, su I'm not surprised. <laughs> so here's my prediction on what is going to happen. I, I'm going to do everything I can, like file a judgment saying, hey, I gave you so long to give me a delegation of authority order, oath of office, oath of ethics, and you didn't do it. I demand dismissal based on this. It's basically like a default judgment. And obviously that probably won't work, but I'll do it anyway. And come March 30th, you know, I'm going to do the same thing, you know, I'm going to say this man can't represent me, and go from there, do the same thing over again, and I'm pretty sure by that point they will try to uh, get me, give me a mental exam, or put me in contempt of court, in which case I'm pretty sure that they will transfer me to a black CIA prison where they will teach me um, astral travel. And the other thing, oh, here's something that was crazy. Um, I say about a week ago, I had a vision of this pretty cute black girl. And I saw her in court today. And she has these eyes that are unmistakable. Her eyes were just, she's pretty cute, but... Um, Apparently she was just someone that was irrelevant, I guess. Um, according to the visions I had of the Neanderdike, my visions obviously of Neanderdike turned out to be irrelevant, and apparently so was my vision of this one cute black girl. Because she was just basically a random person that was there for somebody else. And uh, I thought that when when Lorian when Lorian said that um, the next girl he s saw me with was a black girl, I thought that was her when I had the vision. But apparently I'm wrong. Apparently it's just a random girl. And I really wonder why I had a vision of her because it just doesn't make any sense. That was pretty trippy. So I'm pretty sure when I go to um, 
court on March 30th that it's going to be something's going to give there and I will not raise my voice at these people. I will not be angry or mad. Um, I'll just accept whatever life hands me and next time I'm definitely going to take a lot more kava kava before I go there because I was just so nervous and I sometimes I forgot to say for the record but I don't think that would have helped me out much I think where I really went wrong was not saying not answering the judge's question about how, how much education I've received in my life. Now, if they really wanted to know that, they could just request it, you know what I mean? Do a background check or whatever. And um, But the thing about that is it's, it's very obvious that if a person writes their own affidavits and they know what the word propria persona sujuris means, they probably are competent to be their own lawyer. And she said, and she tried to trick me with, the judge said to me, do you waive your right to an attorney? And I, I, I knew exactly what to say, and I said, I don't waive any of my rights. And she, then, then I saw her, when I said that, she, I could tell she was like recusing herself when she replied to what I said, because she's like, Sir, I'm not asking you um, to waive any of your rights. And then I noticed how, as soon as she said that, she didn't re-bring up the issue. Because if she was, because she played it smart, she didn't bring up that issue again. She knew, she knew exactly what she was doing. Because th that's a trick. When you try to, when she asks you, do you waive the right to an attorney? Because you're like, you're, you're your own attorney, basically. I don't remember exactly why that's a trick, but that is a trick where they say, um, do you waive your right to an attorney because you don't want to waive any rights. And also, with my judgment, I'm going to say that you're denying me speedy trial because here I have been waiting all this time and you're denying me speedy trial and you didn't even hear my affidavits. And, uh, yeah... I feel like I'm officially black now. I'm not I'm not a Caucasian anymore. I'm 100% melanated. I mean, I am ex extremely divergent. White people are drones. Black people are rebellious, but most of them are not skillful about their rebellion, i.e. welfare check. The black people who are skillful about their rebellions are claiming to be Moors.